You definitely already use Rolls in Final Cut Pro, whether you're aware of it or not, but you might not be properly harnessing the power of Rolls. In this video, I'm going to explain how Rolls work, how you can customize them, and different ways to use them that will help you to become a better editor. I'll also be sharing a really cool little trick later in the video on how to create your own Rolls templates so that you don't have to set this up every time you start a new project. If that sounds good to you, do me a solid and hit that like button. It helps the channel out so much. Let me first show you a before and after comparison of using custom rolls versus using the default rolls in Final Cut Pro. This is a TV show that I work on where I have loads of stuff going on in the edit. By default, Final Cut Pro has five rolls. You can see them by heading over to the index window, selecting rolls, and there you have rolls for titles, video, dialogue, effects, and music. Each one is color coded and by default, Final Cut Pro assigns the audio roll for any video files you drop into the timeline to dialogue. Let's take a look at the exact same project after creating and assigning custom roles to help organize the timeline. I've kept the default roles, but I've also added new ones that are specific to this particular show. If I run through and click on some of these new roles, you can see how they are highlighted on the timeline. Having different kinds of titles, footage, and audio color coded like this makes it really easy to navigate around the timeline, especially when it comes to finding a particular shot, fine tuning an edit, or color grading it. Let's quickly go over how to create and assign roles. Head over to the index window, make sure roles is selected, and then click on the edit roles button here at the bottom. Then you can simply click on the plus icon over here to add a new video roll. I'll call it B-roll, and then I'll click on this color icon over here to choose a new color. I wish Apple would give us a little bit more flexibility with the colors we get to choose from, but for now, these are the colors you have to work with. I'll also create a new audio roll, and I'll call that cam audio. So that would be the audio from the internal microphone on the camera, for example, and I'll make that the same color as my B-roll roll. B-roll roll? You can add as many rolls as you like and then hit apply. Now, in your timeline, you can select your clips, right click and go to assign video rolls, and here I'll select B-roll. Notice how some of the clips have changed color, but not all of them. That's because the clips that have stayed the same color have audio attached to them, and the role for that audio is still set to dialogue. I'll right click again and assign the audio roll to cam audio, and now all the clips have changed color. In terms of the color coding, Final Cut Pro prioritizes the audio roll color over the video roll color if you have a shot that has audio attached to it. And this makes sense. The reason why this makes sense will be explained when we get to the audio lanes part of this video. Sub rolls are a really great way to organize specific roles on a deeper level. For example, in this show, 10 different people were interviewed and we have a voiceover. All of this audio is assigned to the dialogue role. With sub roles, I can split them up, and this is great if you're going to be mixing audio later or even when it comes to exporting separate audio tracks. To add a sub role, simply hover over a role like this dialogue role and click on the Add Sub Role Plus icon. I can rename this to whatever the person's name is, and I can keep doing this until I have a role for each person. Then you can select the audio for that person, right click to assign an audio role, and then you can select the correct sub role from the drop down menu. Quick tip for you, if you're working with multicam clips, you'll need to double click on the multicam clip and assign the roles to the clips inside the multicam clip. Let's switch back to our example where all of the custom roles have already been set up and assigned, and let's go through five more practical uses for roles. With my audio organized into different roles and sub roles, you can click on the show audio lanes button in the index window to switch to a more organized view as far as your audio is concerned. What's cool about this is you can expand the sub roles for a particular role by clicking on this button over here, and now you have a detailed view of the dialogue in your edit. This makes it really easy to navigate to specific parts of your edit or to find specific speakers in your edit. While we're in the audio lane view here, another useful thing about splitting your dialogue into sub roles is that if you have specific EQ and compression settings for a particular speaker, like for Lyle over here, you can simply copy that clip and select all the other clips in that sub role and hit Command Shift V to paste those attributes. 
That will save you the time it would normally take to scrub through your edit to look for every time Lyle speaks. Another great use for roles is to hide all the layers that fit into specific roles. Let's say I need to export a version of my edit without any titles on it. I can simply deselect my titles, my lower thirds, info titles, and the location titles. And now all of those clips are hidden on the timeline. I can quickly export that version and then turn them all back on again. If I want to focus on a specific role for a specific editing task, I can click on the circle next to that role to focus on it and all the other roles will condense down and get out of the way. This is great if you need to focus on the music so that you can edit to the beat, or if you want to focus on your sound effects when you're doing sound design. I can also rearrange the order of my audio roles if I wanted to have the live stream audio right below my dialogue. If you saw my video on 10 new Final Cut Pro features that I wish we had, you might remember that I wished we had a better audio mixer built into Final Cut Pro. There is a workaround for that using compound clips to create audio buses or tracks, but I can't stress enough that it's exactly that, a workaround. It's far from a solid solution. Let's say you want to make global changes to the music, for example. You could select all the music, hit Alt-G to create a compound clip, and I'll rename this Music. Then I can make volume adjustments to all the music in the edit, or if I want to add a channel EQ effect to bring down some of the mid-range frequencies so that the dialogue cuts through the music even more, I can apply that globally to all the music using this compound clip. You can break up the dialogue, effects, and other roles into separate compound clips so that you can mix them this way as well. But I would highly recommend making a duplicate timeline before you do so that you have a backup to revert back to if you need it. With these roles, when you export a file, you can also choose which roles to export. You might want to export your dialogue, sound effects, and music on separate tracks if you need to pass that off to a mixer or another editor. Let me know if you want a more detailed video on using compound clips and roles for audio mixing, and maybe that's something I can do in the future. A really important thing to know about roles is that roles are library specific, meaning that if you create a whole bunch of roles for a project and you're hoping that they stay there when you create a new library, you'll notice how they disappear. Instead of having to recreate these roles every time, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to create your own roles template. In the library that has all your roles set up, hit Command N to create a new project, and let's create the video roles first. I'll just create a title using the shortcut Control T, and then I'll copy and paste the title for as many video roles that I have. In this case, it's nine. I'll right click on each one and assign each title to a different video role. Then, Head over to your sound effects library and drag any sound effect onto the timeline. Copy and paste that for each role. Then assign each of the roles to a different clip, including the sub roles if necessary. When you're done, head over to File, Export XML, and save that somewhere that's easy to access. I'll just save that to my movies folder. Now, when I open up a brand new library, I can just go to File, Import, XML. I'll select that XML and import that into my new library. And now you can see that all of these roles are in the new library. Even if I delete the timeline that I imported, the roles stay put. After importing the XML, you might have some missing media because of those audio files, but you can just remove those from the library if that's the case, and that solves that problem. The great thing is you can set up different role templates for different kinds of projects and export XMLs for each. I hope you learned something today. If you did, like this video and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and I'll catch you in the next one.